Hey everyone, Sean here. In today in this video, I wanted to sit down and talk about uh, this particular trailer and other things surrounding it uh, regarding to Natlin, which is the upcoming new region for Genshin Impact. Uh, it's been going uh, on still. This game is managing to sort of like still floating amongst like the ocean that is uh, Gaji games and live service stuff and all that and all in between. So. I do want to talk about it from uh, more of like a character design perspective, but also like addressing a number of things that have been talked about uh, surrounding Natlin, uh, including the frustration and confusion that's been going on. Not that I have an answer to anything like that, but I just wanted to bring it up in my own two piece on it and such like that. So anyways, so when I first saw this uh, whole trailer, uh, when it first like dropped, um, quite surprising, right, to see more characters just dropped. Um, but I believe they w there was a trailer similar to this sort of fashion uh, before, uh, uh, in Fort Fontaine, excuse me, Fontaine, uh, was released to some, uh, fashion. I don't know if they did the whole live 2D thing, uh, for, uh, Fontaine somewhere, but, um, I believe they did the, uh, in-game a trailer for Fontaine, but I'm not gonna go go and correct myself on that. I'm I'm sure there there is an answer for that somewhere though. But um, anyway, so the, judging from like the the designs as a whole this time around, they seem to be taking to a um kind of a different direction. Like even even like uh as a whole, like you know, of course, this is supposed to be a different regional, but I think it, this, when, when you're, when you stare at this, right, when you, like, first see a number of these characters, which I have all on this, like, page right here, thanks to somebody on Twitter compiling it, right, they kind of look, uh, fairly different, you know, if you, when you look at these characters, you're, you definitely just don't know right away, other than the logo, of course, that, you know, I, I think one would not, like just not immediately think of Genshin. I think they're just like pretty kind of different, you know. Obviously, if you're well versed into uh, the Hoyo game stuff, maybe that's not the case. But when you like look from the more outside in, then it might you may have a bit of a harder time. Like, oh, this, this is this is a like a different game or something. I don't know. Maybe that's just my perspective on it anyway. But I think that's a good thing. Because, you know, it does, um, you know, keep things a little more fresh when it comes to character design and such for Genshin in any way. Uh, so I thought overall, just that alone, uh, I kind of like that effect from these characters. So, um, I noticed that, uh, sorry, going back on, uh, this shot right here. The character on the right, which I, be I believe is like Mulana or something, and start, start Mulani, excuse me, Mulani. Uh, in Japanese, it has the same voice actress for uh, Lyria. If anyone plays uh, Granblue, um, I I heard her voice, and I'm just like, wait a minute, it sounds so familiar, right? Um, as someone who does play Granblue from time to time, uh, and I'm talking about the mobile game, not you know Relink or anything like that. I'm not. I'm actually talking about the mobile game, you know. Uh, with the weapon grid and all that stuff. So it, it's nice to hear her voice uh, in this game. And I think the if it's a character thus far anyway. Uh, interesting, uh, a lot of these characters that, you know, fr from Natlin have like this like triangular ta tattoo on their forehead. You'll notice that with a number of these characters, including uh, uh, Sid Lali, I think her name is Sid Talali. A number of these names are kind of hard to pronounce. Um, in it, uh, even Kachina, I believe, has some sort of tattoo on her forehead. Unfortunately, a number of these characters are have have been uh covered, right? Including this guy right here. We'll get to him uh in a bit here. But yeah, um, it kind of is like a blend of like, like a mishmash of like modern, but also like. You know, they're from like a tribe or something like tribal wear of sorts, you know, especially with the tattoos and such like that. But like clothes on Kachina right here look more modern than anything. Right. 
um at least, at least like leading to that direction you know with the hat and everything and um just the way her clothes are it just looks um more on the modern side of it but still has some traits of like sort of that tribal feel in some ways especially with the, the color coordination and everything uh, and then this ball right here, right? What the heck is this ball about? You know what I mean? What What is the meaning of his ball? Like, is this supposed to be like a, I don't know, a tennis ball or a baseball or something? Or, or is it entirely different? You know? Is it just, um, to message like, hey, we're going to have this tournament, right? It's almost like a, um, like an invitation. So you, if, uh, if you will. Now this guy, I'm gonna pronounce his name Kanish, I think for now. Kanish or Kanish. I'm just gonna say Kanish for now until we hear the official like pronunciation. Uh this guy I really wanna pull right away. I love uh for those who don't know, I love characters with headbands on. There's just something about them look that look make them instantly look cooler than anything, right? Um a huge example is like character from like uh, Street Fighter, like Alex. I mained Alex, uh, especially in Street Fighter Five. Played him in Street Fighter Three, of course. But yeah, uh, definitely had more hours in Street Fighter Five with that Alex. So um, I do have an attachment with, for that version of Alex. Um, more ways than one. French fry hair and all, right? <laughs> um, anyway, so headband characters are really cool. Um, I think one of the uh, early uh, early characters that I like um, fell in love with, not like you know um, romantic or anything like that, but like you know just like love the archetype or whatever, is Ray uh, Ray Khan from uh, Beyblade. Definitely a headband character, and um, characters like him I just like really like just from the design alone because of what. It kind of does to their eyes, you know, at certain angles, especially. And then whenever characters like Zoro um, periodically have the headband on, oh man, this looks so cool. And uh, besides the bandana, uh, some of Zoro's outfits and like the movies or whatever have the headband on. I'm like, oh man, it's, it just looks so cool. I'm sure there are many other headband characters that um, I can't name right now. Right on top of my head, but I'm sure like when I see them from like animes and video games, I'm just going to be like, oh man. And Kanish is definitely um, just so another addition to that. He looks so pretty sick. I like his overall design. A lot of squares I noticed right on this guy. Uh, or an end diamonds, of course. Um, instead of like the triangles. A lot of, a lot of it's just shapes. Look at these shapes, you know. Squares, you know. Um, the, the big, one of the big elephants in this room definitely is Aja. Aja, Aja. You know, this 8-bit pixel looking, uh, motherfucker right here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let me, let me, let me pull up my, uh, Twitter for Genshin. Let me, because, uh, the description is pretty interesting for, um, Aja. Aja, um, is a quote-unquote almighty dragon lord, self-proclaimed. So who will a Aja, or something, I, I think that's how you pronounce it, I, I, I'm not uh, super sure. Although it's really funny because he, he, uh, this guy is voiced by Naruto's, um, Japanese voice actress, or Seiyu. So we're gonna hear we're gonna we're, we're definitely already hearing some Naruto out of this little guy. I'm on finally replaced. Oh man, I I kind of wish this was your companion, not to lie. Anyway, no, I'm kidding. Anyway, so um yes, voice for Naruto. But I think here this 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 little guy here, I think this is supposed to be the dragon right for Natlin or uh the pyro dragon, um residing in, in Natlin. Kind of like how, um, uh, what's his face? 
um, Nouvellet was the dragon uh, affiliated with uh, Fontaine, you know, as the the Hydro Dragon uh, Sovereign or whatever, um, as he's officially called, I guess. And I think so. Uh, this guy is that equivalent, but you know, for whatever reason, he has his, like a bit, a bit form. I think I I kind of hope it would be pretty funny, you know. He's and he'll like kind of be like treated like a um, that comedic character, always getting the short end of the stick. But but um, overall, though, he is very powerful, like um, Nouvellet. But uh, yeah, I like to see more from that. Uh, from uh, Aja. But right now, yeah, see, it, 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 this is like the the very most outlandish thing easily out of this whole thing. Why this 8 bit thing? What is going on? Does it have to do with this guy? Because all these squares, so like we have this square dude right here, like the, eight, the bits, right? The pixels. Do these squares represent pixels? Does this guy's kit involve with pixel art or something? I'm digging in quite deep into here, but I'm having fun with this uh, little little theory. Maybe this guy's uh, powers or something does involve with pixels. We don't know. And maybe he just conjured this little thing based off of uh, the pyro dragon or something. I don't know. But let's just keep going. He's cool, you know. Um, yeah, oh yeah. It, right here. This just looks like I don't know. This looks so sick. Now people are already like, you know, uh, slapping him or lumping him together with a shao, which I do understand, but I think he's supposed to be Dendro first off. Yeah, and, and, and it's already funny because this guy is uh, actually voiced by um, the dude who voices uh, Sasuke. So all the more hilarious, right? Um, I think it's Sugiyama or something. Yeah, Sugiyama Noriaki. Sugiyama, um, yes, indeed, voiced the uh, uh, Sasuke. I also believe he voices, um, if I'm not mistaken, um, Sh uh, Emiya Shiro from the Fate series. I think I I could be getting that mixed. I would like to um, say yes on that, but I I think. But for sure, yeah, it's Sasuke. So this is Sasuke, essentially Sasuke and Naruto together. Ironically, right? <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. But yes, this is right away one of the characters I do want to pull for sure. Because he looks just so cool. And hey, if I don't have um, Xiao, then we have Xiao at home, right? <laughs> That's essentially kind of a, a meme I kind of like to go with. Um, actually, let me see. Let me see that shot again before we talk about um Sitalani. Let me see here. Okay, he's about to throw the thing. Boom! And but because of um Aja's appearance, right? And the teaser trailers, right? Hinting at the creatures and stuff like that. A lot of people are thinking that this is going to be a Pokemon themed region. And maybe the whole the, the overall shtick with Natlin is just going to be Pokemon. I would like to think it's not. I think there's just going to be something a little different. Yes, it will probably borrow some things from Pokemon. Just from the fact that yeah, you kinda do tame beasts. But I don't, um, I think it's just going it, I don't think I don't think per, uh, personally it's going to be Pokemon theme. I, I mean I could be wrong. I could be entirely wrong and uh, that this region is going to be a Pokemon freaking just Pokemon. I don't know. Up next, um, this is more a little more like whatever to me. I mean it's not a terrible design or like that, but it's so funny because I believe she is voiced by the same voice actress for um, Fushuan. So that's why the people are already making the connection with Fushuan. And the fact that this character is also likely going to be... Um, what's the what's the English word for it? But um, in Japanese, you say uh, tsundere. Basically, um, uh, they just can't be... Ha like, they just can't... Uh, 
return like a compliment with a smile they're always like angry or irritated but they don't like they don't mean it like that but they they just they just don't know how to like express it with a smile or something it, it's it's, it's kind of hard to explain it's a very specific character arc uh archetype that's been used um uh, again and again and again you know um throughout anime like nowadays which is a uh, again a little more hilarious because um Fushuan is also th that character as well and then you have this person right here who first off has a leopard's tail of sorts jaguar or leopard the ears and stuff so already kind of a stand, um stand out ish but unfortunately she is tied to geo unless they update with uh update geo's kit overall kit um kind of a throwaway right away you know what i mean like you just you're just gonna going to definitely roll just because of how she looks um in japanese uh this sort of like archetype design archetype uh we refer to as like gyaru or gal kind of like uh it's, it's um you got the, they got like blonde hair darker skin um if they're like really dark skin there's a different word for that but um anyway we're not gonna go to that not that i don't think it's uh horribly offensive it's just like i don't know um it's an old term and we, we definitely don't need to bring it bring it here just to uh stay safe but she is definitely a, a, a um what you say a um gal or gal it they just have like this, this like this, like this like specific look to them in japan heavy makeup blonde hair darker skin you know and then uh, i believe she says oh it's that time of the year again and just throws the ball like nothing and unfortunately, for some reason, Eon Sun here, that's the one name I can, like, remember right away. Kind of rolls off the tongue. For me. It's a very brief appearance, unfortunately. Very brief screen time. We can clearly see this character was from the lore trailer way back when. Um, when Genshin first came out. Um, let me see if I can, like, pull that up lore oh it's kind of going crazy um lore trailer i think it's uh, uh let me see <laughs> jeez anyways uh what what was it it was that old lore trailer or story trailer from long i don't want to say long time ago but it feels like long time ago well, you kind of get the point. It's that one character you see. Oh, there you go. T Tavot Chapter. There you go. That's what it was. It's the Tavot trailer. Um. Yazuma. Yeah, see, this is the this is the trailer that was like showing off a lot of these characters way early on. Man, remember when Ayaka was like that character? Now she's like. You know, like, we're over that, right? Same with, um, Sumeru, yes. This is Sinnoh right here, Jesus. Back when uh, Sinnoh was just like that mysterious character. Now we know him as like the, the, the Yu-Gi-Oh, um, little dork, lovable dork. Oh my god, look at that, right? These two. Lynette and Lenny, my goodness. Their designs had blown up too a little bit. Got a bit of a glow up. Alright, here we go. This is the Ansan. Boom. Look at that. She looked pretty cool, right? When she uh appeared in this trailer. Yeah, so there's Natlin right there. Boom. It's like Rumor that she's going to be a Claymore user, so oh, uh, that's gonna be kind of lame, personally. Kind of like how like Sayu was um slapped into the Claymore 
when she easily could have been just like a ninja like um could have used like daggers and stuff like that or sh uh shurikens and kunais and all that stuff like um uh kuki but yeah you can kind of tell that she definitely got more stuff on her but this is a basic template of uh, what she looks like, right? She still has a skull on the side, long, long hair, all that stuff. She looked cool. I, I was like kind of drawn to her design just because she looked like she was going to be like the melee character at the time, right? Now we have characters like, um, uh, Hazo. I almost got his name. Hazo, uh, you know, revealed that's definitely a possibility. I hope she's a catalyst, and you know, if that's the case, and make her um, a melee character. But she looks really cool, I think. Um, her eyes are more detailed, her hair is more detailed. She got the little fur thing going on for her trim going on. Unfortunately, very, very brief appearance. Ball bouncing off her head and everything. And then we got her, um, I think it's like Cha, Cha, yeah, uh, Chaska, Chaska, um, kind of got, kind of is getting lumped with, uh, Clorin, because the hat, same, same, like, thing, too, it's, like, tilted to the side, pointed down, um, I feel like the rigging will be very similar to Clorin, hat and all. So they're definitely re uh, still practicing that recycling thing. If you've noticed, um, Grizzly and someone like uh, Al Alhaidam's like coat thing, they're like hanging off like like very similarly, and I feel like they kind of do that just so the rigging will be a lot easier like that. But that's just me. I don't know. I could be I could be putting on a tinfoil hat for that one, but there's some just something about that that kind of like irks me just a little bit. But then again, they just use the four body types like throughout the three years, right? So, should I be surprised at this point? You know? But yes, ball, right. Hey, look at her nails too, jeez. Mole on the shoulder. Scarf. Looks okay. I mean, I'm not completely drawn into that design. I, I'm not saying it's a horrible design. I'm sure, like, it's for somebody. <laughs> Another, like, mommy character. But speaking of mommy, there's this one. My god. Right. Now, I know there's, there there is a controversy surrounding this character. Now, like, it wasn't said at all or um, officially, like, revealed and like that but people are, are, are um labeling her as like the archon already pyro archon of netlin and uh with that right what netlin's supposed to be quote unquote people are disappointed because she is another character with um at best fair skin or white or white skin when people have been like rooting for more people with darker skin, especially with Natlin, you know. Now, if you take a look here, right? There is there there are characters who um there are more characters this time around with darker skin. I wouldn't say mostly, but you you see you see more dark skin darker skin characters. Kitchen is a little more, like, it's not entirely, like, peachy or fair or anything like that. Uh, Kanish, definitely no. Um, oh yeah, this person's name is Xylen. Or she Shilinen. I, I, uh, man. These, the, the number of these names are this time around are, like, harder for me to pronounce. But you can't say, like, all these characters are white. Like, she has some, some fair, uh, a little bit of a tan. She has some some uh, color to her skin. Mulani definitely. Base here anyway. Yansan yes, definitely. But of all the characters, right? 
Um, I can understand that people were hoping for her to be a little more unique by having darker skin, but she's just, you know, it's just, it's like matching with like, oh, I don't know, Kanish and uh, Chaska. And then if you look at, you know, the Archons, right? Let me just look that up real quick. Archons. I'm pretty sure I'll just like pop in real quick here. Oh, look at that. There's already like R and like. And look at that. Um, yeah, if you look at, look at, look at the Archons. Skin wise. Sure. You know, they're all pretty similar. Which is a, yeah, you know, a bit of a letdown. I do understand. But I'm not going to get into the whole thing. Like, oh, you know, I, like, yeah, I'm all for, you know, different skin colors and all that stuff. But I'm not going to, like, go on the internet and, you know, uh, get super mad about it. But I, I do understand um, why people are frustrated by that. Especially with what Natalyn is expected to, like, represent. Apparently, it's supposed to, like, be, like, you know, like, uh, Oceania, like like New Zealand ish, more on that side of things. And yes, you know if you look at the people of New Zealand or like um around those areas, right? Uh, there's the, there's a there's a fair amount of people with dark skin. So, <laughs> um, and she and she's supposed to be the archon, right, of that of the of the nation, and doesn't have much to represent off of that at all you know um and you when you look at the outfit right there's nothing like representative about what natlin is expected to re represent because this looks like a leather uh, tight suit sort of outfit like she's riding on a motorcycle or something she's going to ride on a motorcycle I would not be surprised if she pull up a, a flaming motorcycle like Ghost Rider style. I mean, I I'd be I'd be cool with that. I like Ghost Rider. I main him in uh, Marvel Three, but that's a different story. Um, the standalone design is great, but to represent Natlin with it, I mean, I don't know. I can't say I'm like completely frustrated or whatever or mad i'm not those one of those people but again i do understand the frustration and sort of like the confusion and all that stuff it is like why why um does she look pretty modern in comparison to what again natalie is supposed to be i believe natalie is supposed to be oh yeah you get to see a full shot of uh uh, Chaska. Oh, look at that. Look at look, it's like a asymmetrical pants, right? Short shorts on the one side, pants on the other. Um, you know, f uh, flowing like bottom half, you know, <laughs> especially when they're running. Anyway. And that seems to be this phoenix, little phoenix right here. Her one of her forms or whatever, maybe. Or then again, hey, you know, in the whole Pokemon thing, if we're gonna go off the whole Pokemon theory, this could be her quote unquote Pokemon. And oh, look at this guy. It's the captain. Oh man, Capitano man. This guy's been so oh man, I'm I'm excited for this character. I, I cannot wait for this guy when they first showed off the uh, harbingers i got my i had my eye on this guy he looks so sick i kind of hope he is some sort of like dragon you know in a human form or something that'd be so cool but if he's just like a like a the like a human that's like really powerful, then I'll take that. But yeah, this guy just looks really really sick. He has been highly anticipated.
And yeah, he's in that land because uh, he's like, I don't know, um, having a hand in the war that's going on with Natlin, supposedly. And that's where some of the confusion does come in too. It's like, where's the war? Why is it supposed to, why, why, um, why all this, right? When there's supposed to be some sort of war going on, what, what's, what's the deal? Why does it look relatively clean? And uh, a lot of people have been pointing out that, uh, Natalie's supposed to be very contradictory. Um, on one side, there's nothing going on, but on the other side of things, there is just like all out war or something, from what it sounds like. So it seems like to me, like, uh, you know, there might be a, you know, the whole like, there's, there's no war in Bossing Say kind of thing, you know? Maybe, maybe a little less of denial, but yeah. And then meanwhile, we have. Her, um, first off, what was her name again? Uh, Mavu Mavuika. Man, I'm I'm gonna have to take time to get used to these names. Mavuika is like talking to these flames, right? And supposedly these flames or whatever represent like tribes within Natlin. And I don't know what's going on with this whole like blurry thing. Yeah, you see these, like, symbols? Yeah. It's supposed to be, like... I believe it's supposed to be, like, tribes. So there's six tribes, I guess, within that one. And, yeah, I guess, you know, having that many tribes, I mean, there's about... There, there's bound to be some sort of a fight, right? And then speaks about, like, oh, yeah, the flames are re will reunite or something like that. I, I forget the, the exact... Dialogue. Oh, yeah, there you go. You just pop it in like that. Um. Yeah, fate. Something about fire. You know. Let me see here. But yeah. Um. There's been. Uh. Pretty mixed feelings, right? I think most people like it. Or excited. Right. But there are a group of people who are frustrated with like how these characters are represented or the represent representation of certain characters, including the Archon. I overall like this design. I don't think it's terrible by any means. But again, I do kind of see the frustration with it, but I'm but I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be frustrated myself. But um but I'm not going to definitely talk down on those people either. Like, definitely not. You know, that's their opinion. And I have mine. You know. Unfortunately, there is a, some sort of stigma in China. Um, and which you can kind of see with um, Genshin Impact. That there is a lack, like a pretty distinct lack of dark skin characters. You know, if you look at like Shinyan, you can look at Ishikaya, you know. Um it seem it you know, it seems to point those fingers, right, towards like China not liking darker skinned characters or just people in general, because there is a bit of a history, I think, how I'm not gonna say everyone in China feels some sort of negativity towards some uh darker skinned people. But um, there seem there seems like that going on, right? Like if you look at even outside of Genshin, like if you look at the poster for like Star Wars, for example, right, the sequel trilogy, they it seems like they go out their way to try to exclude Finn as much as possible. You know, of course, that's that character is iconic for being um, played by a black person, right? You know. And um, uh, China, the, the Chinese posters, you know, again, they they try to not have him included as much as possible. But you know, he's the, he's one of the main characters of the story, so you know, it's like at the end of the day, you know, how could you? But they try to, right? If not, they had. So I don't want to like you know completely like be like um, you know oh uh, China doesn't like um darker skin characters or um 
or anything like that, but you, when you see stuff like that, one cannot help but to think that way, yeah? But, um, that of itself has been going on for a pretty long time, so that's why this whole frustration is, like, building up, right? Or blowing up or building up again and whatever. So that's, like, kind of, like, um, the context that I want to try to provide if anyone is, like, confused by the whole thing. So, um, when, yeah, like, especially when you look at, like, other mobile games, you know, um, mobile games or gacha games, they do have characters of, that are black, you know. Not to say that, you know, every gacha game needs to have black characters, you know. But, hey, I mean, it's cool. Like, I, I'm not going to be bothered by it. But when they exclude characters of that nature, you know, I, I, I won't uh, go out my way to, like, be frustrated by it. But, you know, again, again, I, I don't want to sound, sound like a broken record. I do understand the frustration, right? You know. The idea of having characters to re sort of re represent you, right? Um, I'm all for it, right? That's why in like fighting games, it's nice to ha nice to really see um, characters around the world. You know, you have the black character, you have the Japanese character, you have character from a character from America. You know what I mean? A uh, character from Africa and um, Korea and you know those places like that, right? Which um, Tekken has been trying to do. Street Fighter tries to do as well. Um, and the idea, I believe, is that, you know, somewhere in that roster, there is a character that closely represents you. You know? Char picking a character that kind of resembles you in some way, I think there's nothing wrong with that. You know, making a character that has some traits that you have common with. So again, I feel I can I can see the frustration. But putting that aside, I am cautiously excited for Natlin. I kind of do hope it's just not a one to one like a Pokemon thing. I think having some Pokemon traits is a fine. But if it's just like something we saw from Star Rail with that Pokemon event just slapped into here and that be the main mechanic I think that'd be pretty kind of lame in my opinion it just feels like it, it it does kind of feel like it's copy and pasted but I hope that's like kind of a red herring um subverted expectations all that stuff and, and be something completely different you know it definitely doesn't help that um Trailers like, let me see, where's the, where's that tra teaser trailer? Um, where was it? Where was it? Uh, I'm just gonna type in that one. Let's see, oh yeah, right here. Duh, it's like the fourth one. Actually, no, I lied. This is another trailer though. We couldn't take a look at though. Um, I am talking about. Let me see. Go back a bit. Come on, come on. There we go. Search bar. At Lynn. Okay. There we go. This is definitely not helping that though, because yeah, you know you're, de you're definitely dealing with some creatures that you can seemingly control. So it does now support more of the theory about the Pokemon thing. So. I think at best, maybe one part will be a Pokemon thing. Another part will be something else. <laughs> Although a lot of this stuff is for like traversal purposes. In some puzzles, maybe. So I'm kind of okay with that. But yeah, but look at that. You, you can like travel around with these as these creatures. And then there you go, you get a sneak peek of uh, Natlin. Right? Uh, during this trailer, anyway. 
For some reason, though, with Natlin, I get, like, Crash Bandicoot vibes. Like, this, I don't know, I don't know, some about the colors, the music especially, you know? The fact that you are traversing, and then, you know, Crash Bandicoot is all about platforming and all that stuff. Kind of feels that way. And now this trailer, um... Involves with more traversal stuff like this thing. Like, what the heck is this thing? You know, and maybe, maybe now these uh, these characters and now the Natalie characters are going to have some sort of traversal mechanic. Maybe, right? Because so far, Kachina. Mulana, I think, or uh, Mulani, excuse me, I keep, I keep saying Mulani, Mulana for some reason. Mulani has the shark. This guy just floats around like an airbender. Yeah, I see that you got the Mulani with the, the shark, right? And then you have this guy, right? Claymore user. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> and then again, this does not help, right? This only supports more on the Pokemon theory. Like, god damn it, right? But man, this guy looks cool. Oh man, she look, he looks so cool. I like the outfit. I like the headband. This guy looks sick. I think especially right there. Oh man, he looks so cool. Oh, man. Right here too, like just just something about the headband shape, the way the headband does to the eyes. It's just so cool. I don't know what it is. It's I don't know, like something about covering the forehead and just having the eyes right there. It's just I don't know. It really makes those characters really, really cool. Why is it so cool to me? I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, right there. Just about right there is the best we can get. Man. This guy looks sick. I want to pull him. I want to pull him for sure. And yes, yeah, again, this angle. Yeah. A lot of people were saying, like, these look like gym leaders or something. Like, or like the Elite Four or gym leaders or just Pokemon trainers in general. Which okay, I can kind of, I can kind of see, you know. And then these creatures, right, that we're traversing, let's go. What's going on with that? And I don't think th this is like, um, I don't think these creatures are scrapped or anything because that would be weird. Like they work put, put so much work in these creatures and just to scrap them for like these that would be pretty weird right because that's um Moolani, basically this one is kachina and then this guy is a uh, kanish basically Kind of, kind of suspicious on that, you know, <laughs> but I don't know. I just, I, I don't know. It's kind of thought about that. But yeah, overall, um, you know, controversies and frustrations and confusions aside. Yeah, I think these characters look pretty cool in their own right. But the characters I want to pull right away, my desire meter, is, you know, being strong for certain characters is Kanish. Or Kanish. Kanish and Mavu, um, uh, Mavuika. Her being a uh, Archon and stuff. The only other Archon I'm missing right now is Venti. Because I missed out on the very first banner. Somehow. I tried to pull, I tried to pull, but never, no, 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 uh, no cigar. But anyway, Mavuika and uh, Kanish. 
are um, must-haves for me right away. Right away. And you know what? That's funny because um, I feel like not enough people are talking about Ororon. Oron, Ororon? I don't know. Ororon, I'm just going to say. the Jap I'm just going to try to be Japanese with it. Ororon, I feel like not enough people are talking about him. To be fair, he's only he only appeared very briefly as well as Ian-san. Which I think he appeared... Oh, where is it? Oh, man. Um, hmm, that's strange. Anyway. There we go. He only bri briefly appeared during the Phoenix part, I th think, anyway. It was, like, somewhere around here. But anyway. Um... He's like the only person or the only character that I'm just like totally whatever. Oh, you know what? I realized I think this person, uh, Zilo Lent, uh, Zylonen, oh, man, this, her name is really hard for me. I think she's, uh, has the same voice actress as Power from Chainsaw Man. The blonde chick right here. You know, because because uh, it's Feru, uh, Firu's uh, I, so I think her that's how you pronounce her last name, but I, um, I believe she voices power. <laughs> Pretty funny. Anyway, um, yeah, Ororon is just kind of whatever to me. Maybe that's why no one is really talking about him too much. It's because he only brief briefly appeared, and um. He's super whatever. As he, and he's standing aside um the captain. It's uh, kinda kinda strange. He appeared so briefly too. You you barely get a clear shot of him. Right? That's strange. So this is the only clear shot, which is the, just this um random shot right here on Twitter. That was from the Twitter post. So, um, yeah. The rest of the characters, maybe eon Sun could be a desirable pull, but I have to see her kit. Or her animations. The rest of them for right now are kind of eh. But Kachina might be a free, that, that free character, I think. And you never know. Maybe the maybe the story will change my opinion, like it did with um, Chlorin and uh, what you call um, Navia. Navia was like super whatever for me at the time when she was first revealed. But once um, we learned about her, I was like, damn. And then when her trailer appeared. With the guns, the cannons, I'm like, oh my god, she is basically a character from Azure Lane. And I have a bit of a, an attachment to that game. Like an old friend kind of thing. Um, And I had to pull for her. It completely changed, right? So, just two characters for right now I do want to pull, which is, again, Kanish and Mavuika. Rest of them, whatever. Again, that could change. I think Ororon though, probably not. I don't know. Something something about Ororon is just whatever. If Aja is uh, an actual character, like a playable character, that would be funny. You know? But I think maybe Aja could be kinda like that the the Paimon for um Kanish. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with these two. I'm I'm very intrigued. But Enough talk. Uh, I think I went on pretty long. Um, hopefully, it's not super long. But I wanted I wanted to just make this you know a, a pretty hefty discussion because yeah you know this is a new region for Genshin Impact. 
I think it is due for uh, for that big drop of content. We are running dry at this point with uh, Fontaine. Kind of ironic because it's supposed to be the Water Nation. But anyway. And now we're going to go into a actual dry region. Kind of. That is Navlin. Maybe another trailer we'll see that War Torn Nation part. But for right now, I'm kind of like weirded out like a, a lot of people are. You know. Oh, Mapa Wika. You know, a lot of people are saying. Doesn't look like a war, the God of War or whatever. Or a, a, an actual Pyro Archon. She looks like um, Kave with orange hair or whatever. With a biker outfit. And... Um, and also kind of comes off like Himiko, you know, Himiko, um, which is, I, I think, really funny. The Kabe thing is funnier, but the Himiko thing is kind of funny as well. Which, you know, it's a Hoyo game. You can't really help it. Himiko is that re reoccurring character in every universe. So I, I wouldn't be too surprised. But... Those are my ramblings and thoughts about Natlin and Genshin Impact. Uh, what do you guys think? Are you bothered by the whole like dark skin character thing once uh, once again, or um, are you just kind of like indifferent about it or something? What do you think? What do you think of these character designs overall? Is there a character you want to pull right away? Uh, what do you think of a jaw? Like, is a jaw gonna be like a the superior dragon like um, Duvalet? You know. Um, are there, who, who, who do you want to pull right away? You know, what do you think of the Pyro Archon, especially? What do you think of the world of Natlin, right? The, 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 uh, region design and everything. Are you excited once again? Are, is your, uh, motivation to play Genshin has re reignited? Funny enough, no pun intended. Um, you know, all the, all those comments, please leave me down below. Love to check them out. I'm all for a uh, friendly discussion. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps out and I do appreciate it. And yeah. So that's all for this video. Ramblings and all. For uh, Natlin and Genshin Impact. Uh, I am cautiously excited for it. Because um, you know. I'm, I'm willing to still play the game. Just because I really like the story thus far. But man it still has its problems. Man after three years. It still needs some fixing, dog. <laughs> but, hey, characters don't look bad. You know, probably another region. Who the hell knows? Thank you very much. Hope to see you all in the next video. John out.